Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Xiang Yan from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. And today I'm going to talk about intuitive analysis on peer to peer resource sharing networks. And this talk will include several joint, joint work with Professor uh, Cheng Deng Qi and their students. Um, today I'm first, I will first uh, uh, introduce our model for the share, resource sharing network and introducing the uh, market equipment solution. Uh, when the all the participating agents are honest and introducing uh, how, what is the agent's potential cheating strategy in such a resource sharing scenario. And then I will show uh, how this uh, cheating strategy will influence the resource sharing results. Mm, so uh, we consider uh, agents are sharing redundant resources in the peer-to-peer -peer networks. This is the first uh, first motivated by the famous application called BitTorrent. Mm, I think the, in the original BitTorrent, uh, the shared resource is the uh, network transmission bandwidth. And actually, um, for other res resources such as the processing power or the disk storage can also be shared on the peer-to-peer -peer networks. Basically, this resource should be um, divisible. Uh, I like to use this uh, figure to represent the uh, sharing networks. Uh, precisely, the uh, this is a graph where the vertices in the graph is uh, represents the agents in the network, and uh, each uh, agent has a weight, uh, which is by this this represents the agents resource, the total resource to be located, and if there is the an edge between two agents, then the this means this two, ag two agents can share resource with each other. And we use the special notation x uv to represent the po portion of use a resource to be located to uh, his neighbor v. And in the resource sharing network, the utility of each agent is defined as the total received resource from his neighbors. So the such a resource sharing network forms a special linear error de Bru mark. In the error de Bru mark, each uh, participant will sell the, his own goods to his, his neighbors and also buy the goods from his neighbors. And actually, um, uh, and for these uh, error de Bru markets, the uh, desired solution concept is called market equilibrium. This is to say that the given a fixed uh, price vector for each agent, the, their utility is maximized under the constraint of budget constraint and the market clearance. Mm. The market equilibrium solution can, uh, in the error linear error market can be obtained by a um, again called the proportional response. The proportional response means that each agent will respond to his neighbors by allocating his resource in proportional to how much it receives from them. We got a formula here, uh, but this is a, a quite uh, abstract definition. And uh, uh, we, let me use the an uh, example to illustrate it. This is uh, exactly uh, the uh, example I mentioned. Uh, there are four agents in the network. Each agent has a, uh, a weight representing his total resource to be allocated, and uh, at the beginning. Um, the each agent will allocate his resource evenly to all his neighbors. Uh, we, we focus on the first agent, V1. He he got a totally uh, one unit of resource, and he will allocate one half to his uh, each of his neighbors, V2 and V4. And uh, on the other hand, he receives one unit from V resource, one unit of resource from V2, and two units of resource from V4. So he responds to this uh, allocating allocation uh, in, in, uh, by the proportional way, uh, such as he he will re re allocate one third of his resource to V two and those two third of his resource to V four, and actually uh, we can continue this calculation for all the agents and with and in this this uh, figure at least all the locations along this edge. And actually, we can check that this for every agent, this proportional response uh, condition is uh, satisfied. 
uh, in other words, this dynamic process converts, and uh, and in the and it has been shown that such the convergence state is exactly the market equilibrium. And uh, we we focus on such a, such a uh, magnet because this uh, there is this this magnet has a very good property. It maintains the fairness among the agents in a typical for taught way. And uh, of course, there is uh, another common way to define fairness among this resource sharing problems is called uh, the maximum fairness. Basically, it's defined on a concept called the exchange ratio, which is the, uh, the utility one agent receives uh, by per unit of his resource. Uh, that is the utility divided by all the by all his uh, resource, and uh, uh, a location is called a maximum fairness. Fair, if the minimal exchange ratio among all the agents are maximized, and actually we have shown that such a, a fairness is exactly equivalent to the uh, result of the proportional response. So up to now, the everything is very good. Uh, um, again, the market equilibrium can be obtained by the proportional response, and uh, it also maintains the fairness among agents. But uh, such a good result is only held when every agency will uh, follow the proportional response again honestly. The question here is that uh, will all agents fo follow this uh, proportional response? Again, uh, uh, or we, we want to ask, well, will a, any agent be able to benefit from any cheating strategies? And basically, for the uh, market equilibrium solution concept, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, for example, the, there are several famous results in the future market that the agent can, cheat, can benefit from the market equilibrium solution um, by some cheating strategies. And in our work, we answer the question by yes, uh, for this IRD blue market, of course, with some conditions. Mm, so let's first uh, look at what's, what is the possible cheating strategy that agents may take. The first uh, strategy is called uh, weight cheating. And intuitively, in the market equilibrium, uh, it's, it's well known that if a good ha has a small, uh, uh, less supply, then the good has a higher unit price. So, uh, so the, the uh, agent, uh, agent participating in the resource sharing uh, uh, network, they uh, may concern not providing all his resource to sh for sharing so that his resource may worth much, uh, may the, each unit of his resource may worth much. Uh, was was more. Uh, this formally in the uh, graph uh, representation, this means that an agent will decrease his uh, weights, uh, maybe uh, by reporting a weight from zero to his original uh, weight W. The second cheating strategy is the called edge cheating. This is uh, an intuitive strategy from the proportional response uh, allocation rule, and since there are uh, for each, uh, concerning one uh, agent who is connecting to two uh, two neighbors, one of his neighbor has some, a very large amount of resource, while the other has a very small resource, a small amount of resource. Then it's basically for the is basically the agent may concerning. Uh, I will I will prefer a rich friend than and than the poor friend. So he will not choosing well, he will uh, not sharing the resource with the poor neighbors. Uh, formally in the network, this means that the agent will delete delete one of his edge uh, with the others uh, with, with with his neighbors. And uh, the second strategy, uh, the third strategy is called false name uh, cheating. Um, basically, this uh, this is a we got a and, uh, this figure will illustrate the, such a strategy. Basically, the uh, strategic agent U may copy himself uh, into uh, copy himself for many times, 
Uh, here he in this uh, example the agent only copy himself for two times and use these two identities to share resources with his neighbors uh, each identity of uh, each copy identity will have a uh, part of his uh, original resource and uh, this may help him to he may consider that such a strategy may help um, him to improve his, his utility the last strategy is uh, uh, quite similar to the first name strategy, which I we call it uh, cyber attack cheating. Um, basically, uh, the in the cyber attack cheating, the agent may create several fictitious uh, uh, nodes in the network, and each fictitious node will connect it to one of his uh, neighbors, and uh, also contain some part of his original resource. And this is a uh, quite uh, um, powerful strategy, and uh, such a strategy is hard to uh, uh, hard to be detected because the uh, the peer to peer network is uh, uh, basically distributed, and uh, each a participant is not available uh, has no, no information about his how his neighbors is connected to other agents and uh, in our work basically we are focusing on this four kind of cheating strategies and want to see uh, whether this this strategies can uh, help an agent to improve his utilities and uh, to formally measure the agent's incentive to uh, adopting such uh, such strategies uh, we introduce the concept called the uh, incentive ratio. Basically, the incentive ratio uh, is defined for uh, an incentive. The incentive ratio of an agent is defined as the maximum utility one agent can obtain by some strategy uh, divided by the utility of his honest behavior. And uh, the incentive ratio of the M again is defined as the maximum um, incentive ratio among all agents. So. Mm, yeah, for the definition, the incentive ratio of a, a, a mechanism is uh, naturally larger than or equal to one. And uh, if the incentive ratio is equal to one, meaning uh, with respect to some specific strategy, it means that this mechanism is truthful against this strategy. Or in other words, the, the agent, no agents can uh, obtain a larger, uh, more utility by uh, adopting such a your strategy. So yeah, in, uh, here is uh, our results for this uh, this research sharing network. Basically, the the proportional response again is truthful against uh, the the first three kind of cheating strategy: weight cheating, edge cheating, and uh, false name cheating. And uh, actually, the cyber attack will help the agent to improve his uh, their utilities. Um, but the incentive ratio of this cyber attack is bounded by some constant. And uh, the, the incentive ratio is exactly square of two uh, if the net underlying network is the complete graph. And uh, the incentive ratio is two if the for general networks. And uh, all this, uh, this two bounds for the incentive ratio are tight. Mm. So in the rest, uh, of our my talk, I will uh, uh, show you how to, how are we prove this results. But before we go into the details, we I I like to first show you how this uh, results of this proportional response again look like. Basically, the allocation under the the, the location under the proportional response again can be characterized by a combinatorial structure called the uh, bottleneck decomposition. Um, to see the bottleneck decomposition, we first define a ratio called the alpha ratio. This is the ratio defined all over all the vertices subsets. Uh, for example, for the uh, uh, vertices set B, uh, the, we consider the, uh, the ratio that is uh, the total weight of his, the, his neighbors divided by the total now weights of this uh, set. And uh, the alpha ratio is defined uh, as the minimal possible value among all these uh, vertices subset. 
and uh, we call a vertices set B is the uh, maximal bottleneck if he has his if B has the maximal size uh, with the minimal alpha ratio and uh, it is not hard to see that such the uh, alpha ratio and the maximal bottleneck for a graph is is unique and uh, yeah here is an example uh, to this this in this figure there are only three uh, agents uh, vertices in this graph and uh, the weights of the each vertices is uh, 10 101 thousand and by the definition the alpha ratio for this graph is uh, 11 over 100 and uh, the maximum bottleneck is uh, only the vertices three and uh, with this notation, we can introduce this bottleneck decomposition. Basically, uh, on the original graph, we found the maximum bottleneck of a graph, as well as the his this uh, his the bottom the uh, neighbors of this bottleneck maximum bottleneck, and we de deleted this pair of bottleneck from the original graph, uh, also changing the the, the vertex set and. Uh, Gets a new uh, new graph, and we found the bottleneck uh, maximum bottleneck for the new graph again, and it delays the his him and his uh, neighbors again, and uh, until the and repeats this process until the graph is uh, empty. Basically, then we got the a, a, a sequence of pairs of bottle, maximum bottleneck and their um, and their neighbors, and this uh, we we. We name this this pair of bottleneck and their pair uh, neighbors as the bottleneck decomposition for the graph, and this also uh, divided all the vertices in the graph into two classes. Uh, if the uh, vertices uh, belongs to some maximal bottleneck in, in the process, then the vertices is called a B class vertices, and if the on the other hand, these vertices belong to some maximal bottlenecks neighbors, then the vertex is called a C-class vertex. And uh, again, in this example, the yeah the uh, the only the B-class vertices uh, the, the only B-class vertices is V three, and the other two is the C-class vertices. And uh, with this bottleneck decomposition, uh, we can construct a, construct a special uh, maximal flow. Uh, to determine the uh, allocation uh, for the on the each edge, which is exactly the allocation uh, for the in the under the micro equilibrium, but uh, more importantly, the uh, in the market equilibrium, uh, the resource is only shared uh, between um, vertices from uh, between vertices from B class and the C class. Uh, here I got an example. Uh, here in this exa uh, original example, uh, under the market equilibrium, uh, there are only res resources only shared along this um, edge between uh, V1 and V3, and uh, the edge uh, between V2 and V3. This is a two edge between a vertices, C class vertices and a B class vertices. And there is no uh, resource shared along this edge between C class to C class uh, vertices, and uh, and uh, with this uh, characterization for this uh, allocation, we also know that the utility for each agent can can be de uh, decided only by the agent's own weight and the alpha ratio of the bottleneck uh, he belongs to. So we don't need to really care about the exact allocation on for each uh, edge, but so we but we can decide we can uh, calculate the agent's utility by only calculating the alpha ratio for for the for the graph. And uh, yeah, here is in this example the we list uh, the equilibrium allocation on the figure and. Uh, we can see that the utility can be determined by his own each vertex's own weights and the alpha ratio. Now we are able to um, uh, start our proof for this uh, several results. 
firstly, let's look at the weight cheating strategy and uh, recall this uh, our previous analysis and say that it means the um, an agent's utility can, uh, can be decided by his own weights and the alpha ratio. And actually, for, uh, for when an agent U is adopting the weight cheating strategy, other agents' weights is fixed and uh, the we consider the bottleneck decomposition for the graph as the function of his this strategic agent's weights and uh, so the utility for the agent is also a function of his reported weights and our uh, to show this uh, again is truthful against such a strategy we are actually showing that if a agent u is reporting his weights uh, in this uh, run, in the interval from zero to w, then his uh, maximum utility is obtained when x will equal to w. Mm. So here is uh, the roadmap to for showing this proof, and uh, actually we show a very uh, even stronger conclusion that such a utility function is uh, monotonously decre non decreasing. Uh, when the weights of agent U uh, increase from zero to WU. And uh, the detailed proof go with the several steps. Uh, we first divided this interval into several sub-intervals. And uh, in each sub-interval, -inter the bottleneck decomposition for the graph does not change. And uh, we saw that in each sub-interval, -sub the utility function is uh, monotonously non-decreasing and continuous. And uh, the utility function is also continuous at each break point between uh, different intervals, uh, different sub intervals. So um, instead of uh, going to the details of this, uh, proving these two claims, I'd like to use an example to show that. This is uh, the example I, I present to you when I'm introducing this strategy. Uh, here there are. Um, 12 vertices in the graph and one vertice is a wave file will uh, increase his weights from zero to infinity. And uh, this is a table listing all the uh, bottleneck uh, pairs that the agent U belongs to when his uh, weights uh, increasing from zero to infinity. And uh, basically in the we, we draw the picture for his utility and the corresponding alpha ratio here. As we can see, the utility of his this agent is always increasing, and uh, yeah, there are several breakpoints uh, that which the where the bottleneck decomposition for the graph will may change, but the utility function is always continuous on this breakpoint, and uh, it's very interesting to know that this alpha ratio for this agent is always first increasing until the it reaches to uh, the number one and then decreasing. And this will be a very important uh, property that we may use in the further analysis. And uh, basically, we are showing that this utility function for agent, a strategic agent is monotonously increasing. So we show that the, the, uh, maximal, uh, the maximal utility is obtained when he reports his uh, weights truthfully, uh, honestly, uh, this is basically because the uh, the agent cannot uh, provide more resource than his than more resource than what he has, so the maximum utility is obtained when he reports his real uh, resource. So next, we consider the edge cheating strategy. Mm, again, we look at this uh, the bottleneck dissociation before the agent adopting the strategy and after the agent adopting such a strategy. Basically, there is only difference between these two networks is that one edge is deleted. And uh, again, the utility can be calculated by the agent's weight and its alpha ratio. And uh, our objective is to show that the, by deleting such an edge, the utility of agent U does not increase. And actually, since this edge can be deleted by agent U or by agent V, so we're actually proving that uh, both U and V's utility cannot increase. Uh, 
by uh, after the deleting such an edge. Uh, here's the roadmap for the proof. Um, basically, we we compare this uh, bottleneck decomposition before deleting the edge and after deleting this edge, and we show that this the first several bottleneck pairs does not change at all. And uh, actually, the, all the B class vertices in the original graph will not change to a C class vertices in the new graph. Uh, and all the vertices in C class in the original graph will not change to a B class uh, vertices in the new graph. So um, we can divide in the case that uh, by this, the class we agent U and V belongs to. Uh, into at, uh, in totally uh, 16 cases. Um, and actually, uh, by this three uh, property, we can show that most of the cases that does not exist. And uh, here is the table, table we list with all the cases. And actually, uh, by symmetry, there are some cases that we don't that's need to consider. And all these cases, uh, most of the cases can be cannot exist by the three properties we have shown. And there are only two extreme cases uh, we need to carefully analysis. And uh, due to the time limit, I will not go to that details. Next, we consider the uh, first name cheating strategy. And uh, this is a relatively easy result. Uh, this is result is relatively easy to prove um, because the Again, we look at the bottleneck decomposition before the and after the agent adopting the strategy. And basically, we want to show that by uh, copy, by if one agent is copying himself, he can, his utility does not increase. And actually, we show a stronger uh, property that this two bottleneck decomposition is exactly the same. Uh, except that we can, we need to replace the um, vertices in the original graph by the copied identities in the new graphs. So since the um, the, the bottleneck decomposition does not change, then the alpha ratio does not change, so that the utility of the agent does not change. Um, this for the finish of the proof for the truthful new results. And the next, we are going to some a little uh, complicated part of that about the incentive ratio for the cyber attack. Mm. Firstly, we go to the results when the underlying network is a complete graph. And this is a, a kind of a practical scenario because in real applications, each agent is able to share resources with each, each other agents. So the network should be a complete graph. And uh, yeah, again, we are comparing the bottleneck decomposition before an agent adopting the cyber attack and after, after that. And uh, if the uh, network is a complete graph, then the bottleneck decomposition, we show that there are only two kinds of bottleneck decompositions. And precisely one, one kind is that the uh, the own, there are one vertices that belong to the B class and other agents all belong to C class, or everyone is belong to the B class. And uh, and uh, when uh, in this figure we show that if the uh, we consider this uh, agent V adopting the cyber attack. And uh, split itself into there's a uh, n vertices in the uh, n vertices in the graph, and uh, if agent V adopting the cyber attack strategy, it is uh, we we split into n minus one fictitious nodes, each connecting to one of its original neighbors. And uh, in this new graph, we also show that there are only three kind of bottleneck decompositions, and we further show that if such uh, uh, if we can obtain more utility than uh, he does bef before adopting the cyber attack strategy, the bottleneck decomposition for the uh, new graph uh, must be in this form. Uh, basically, uh, the there are only one pairs of maximal bottleneck, 
and uh, the B class only contain, uh, contain, uh, consists of one fictitious node and uh, all other, uh, all his uh, original neighbors except once. And uh, the C class will consist of uh, n, minus one, uh, n minus two fictitious nodes and one of his neighbors. And uh, by doing so, we can we can formalize this utility function of uh, this strategic agent with some parameters and uh, to and the uh, the incentive ratio for this agent can be derived uh, in this um, maximization problem constraint maximization problem and we show that by any choice of these parameters this maximization has an upper bound has an upper bound of square root of two meaning that the incentive ratio for this uh, uh, cyber attack strategy uh, is at most a square root of, square root of two. And uh, for this general networks, is, uh, the proof is much more complicated um, because the structure is, can be uh, much different. And uh, basically, uh, we, we're trying to transform this cyber attack by a uh, multi-step pro process. Uh, intuitively, the, after the cyber attack, each agent, agent, your strategic agent is replaced by, replaced by several fictitious nodes. And this, this means that his uh, original neighbor, uh, each of uh, his original neighbor will only receive a resource from one of his this fictitious nodes, uh, and this some some neighbors will receive more resource uh, than he does from uh, he than he receives resource from agent U in the original graph. Uh, we um, we introduce this neighbor. We include this neighbor. This kind of neighbors in the set and hatch, and other neighbors is. Uh, uh, consists of is uh, com uh, is divided into the another set called we check. Intuitively, the when the agent you creating fictitious nodes, uh, he he need to increase uh, he he need to allocate more resource uh, into the fictitious nodes connecting to the neighbors or in the V hatch and uh, uh, allocating less resource to the a fictitious nodes connecting to neighbors in the um, 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 check. So basically, the this uh, cyber attack strategy process is transforming into the basically two parts. Um, the first part is that some weights of the fictitious nodes is increasing, and the other part is some weights of the fictitious nodes are decreasing. And uh, as I mentioned, that as as I mentioned before, that the the there is a, a very interesting property for the alpha ratio of an agent uh, when his weight is increasing. And with this property, we are able to show that the when some fictitious nodes weight is increasing, the utility change is uh, can be upper bounded by the alpha ratio times the change of weight. Uh, well, when some agent, when the weight of some features the nodes are decreasing, the utility of this uh, agent is uh, is non decreasing. So combining these two parts, the increasing part and the decreasing part, we can show that the the utility, in the agent strategy agent's utility in the final graph is at some, at most two times of its original utility. Basically, this is saying that the incentive ratio for this cyber attack strategy is at most two. And finally, we, we give two examples to show that this, this two upper bound is tight. Uh, the example for the general network is very easy to construct. Basically, we can use the align uh, consists of five, five vertices. And uh, an interesting pro property here is that the strategic agent has a neighborhood who is a lift node in this network. This means that uh, uh, by uh, creating fictitious nodes, 
the strategic agent can only uh, can can allow can obtain all his neighbor's results by only allocating an infinitely infinitely small result to him, and uh, he can use all most of his results to share with some uh, I call so called uh, rich friends to get more utilities. And in this example, the uh, incentive ratio for the strategic agent is uh, two minus the epsilon, and basically this means when epsilon is going to zero, the the incentive ratio uh, converges to two. And uh, the example for the complete graph is quite uh, complicated. Uh, in this n vertices network, we carefully choose this weights for the each agent, and uh, we also need to carefully choose the uh, specific uh, ways for this each fictitious node to make the, to obtain the maximum utility by the cyber attack. And uh, actually, this this is a, a tight bound for the where the incentive ratio for this strategic agent is square root exactly square root of two. But as we can see, this this is a this uh, maximum utility is very hard to obtain because the the it's, it is very difficult for an uh, agent in a distri distributed network to calculate this um, uh, complicated solution to obtain the maximum utility. So uh, combining all of these results, we are able to show that uh, the agency in the resource share network has little incentive to manipulate them again because the cheating strategy is very hard to implement, but uh, can only increase his utility a little bit. And uh, this whole result uh, established the first robust result for a practical network sharing protocol model. And uh, in the future, we may consider several applications for this uh, uh, result. The first one is uh, very intuitive that this, it is possible to apply such a mechanism for the computational power sharing in the blockchain scenario. And uh, on the other hand, in our current model, the resource of all agents is shared at the same time. So basically, it's, it's, more, it's very important to define the corresponding dynamic sharing again, where the agent may respond to their neighbor's sharing after some time. OK, basically, this, uh, this is all what I want to talk about. And you may ask any questions. And uh, also, if you have further questions, you can contact me after the meeting. Uh, thank you. OK, thank you. Thank you, Xian, for a nice talk. And I, I got some questions from the audience. Have you considered all possible attacks? Say, for example, you could bluff to somebody. And this is another kind of weight cheating. And have you considered the case of combined cell attacks together? Um, uh, sorry, I I not quite uh, actually get your question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, question? I like ask, I can ask one by one. Like, have you considered all possible attacks? Say, for example, you could bluff to somebody, like another kind of way cheating. Um, the, I'm not quite sure I understand the, the meaning for bluff, but I think the actually I think the uh, in the uh, real uh, peer to peer sharing network is maybe quite difficult to do the bluffing in the sharing because the and um, actually this is a um, decentralized uh, system and uh, uh -huh. uh, in, in in real uh, in in real applications each agent has very little information and uh, um, in our theoretical model we only model uh, we we're, we're only focusing mm -hmm. on that uh, the scenario that each agent is able to obtain the information of this weights and uh, his name who who is his na uh, neighbors? Actually, he he. Um, I think the uh, real in the real scenario, each agent does not have the information that how much the resource his neighbors has. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we can assume he he knows this information. But uh, I'm not quite sure about this bluffing. What well, how like bluff, bluff is difficult here, right? Yeah, like I, like I, I they, think... they they like they they, have, they do not have like enough information to do this bluff thing. Yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> okay, I agree okay. That, I agree that if and um, if we assuming that such a strategy happens, we may consider some 
uh, there is still yeah. some uh, incentive issues, but uh, uh -huh. yeah, to be honest, we don't think that's a, a, a practical scenario, so we didn't consider that. Okay, then the other question is, have you considered the case of combining several attacks together? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, the, that's a good question, and uh, maybe mm, I should apologize. I, I, I think I didn't have the time to talk about this combining these strategies. Actually, the answer is yes, and the okay. I, and the exact answer is that the, uh, the all the incentive results hold for the combining of these results. For example, I, I show this uh, the uh, um, again is uh, truthful against the first three strategy and. Uh, Actually, it's truthful against uh, any combination of these three uh, strategies, uh, and uh, basically, uh, the I I'm not sure sure this. Uh, uh, let me think about. Um, maybe combining the first three and uh, the cyber uh, strategy will lead to a um, bounded incentive ratio, which is exactly the incentive ratio of this cyber attack. I see. Okay. Any further question? Let me see. If there's no further question, then that's thanks Xiang again, and uh, thanks for his nice talk. And that concludes his talk and uh, all the talks in the Young PhD forum. Thank you. Thank you for all the speakers.